So I asked about who uh, might think of themselves as a designer early on. Who in the room uh, would call themselves a developer or has done some development? Okay. Uh, and uh, who of you has uh, built something with a, that uses a database? Uh, who of you have made that database integration yourselves? Who of you is a database expert? That's what I thought. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's, <laughs> I'm look, it's like looking in a mirror. Yeah, I also have made things with databases, and goodness me, if they were ever to go out into the wild, I'd be in a world of hurt. Um, so, so luckily, we're, we're going to hear something a little bit about that, about that now. Um, so uh, Tanmay Gopal, we're very lucky to have here. Um, there are certain things that you look for when people submit uh, a proposal for a talk, and the expression, you will witness the raw awesomeness. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Oops. The bar is set very high now, but uh, you, you certainly have our attention. Um, so, so, yeah, hearing about data, database-driven Jamstack, please make him very, very welcome. It's Tanmay Gopal, everyone. Um, hey, everyone. So uh, I'm going to zoom through this super fast. The whole thing is a live demo, uh, so we shall pray to the demo gods. Um, cool. So I'm going to talk about building dynamic sites uh, with static sites, which are Jamstack, right? Uh, I'm one of the founders at Hasura. We build a GraphQL engine, a real-time GraphQL engine on Postgres. I'm one of the founders there. Uh, more on that later. So we're all here because static, quote-unquote, websites are awesome. Um, these are uh, not actually static. They're Jam. Uh, and I'm going to start this off with a simple Gatsby plus uh, Gatsby website deployed on Netlify. Right, um, which is kind of what we're all familiar with, something that we all love. So that's what my um, directory looks like. That's my Gatsby site. I have a page here that says, hey there. I'm just going to add a space. Um, I'm going to commit this and deploy. So that's my Gatsby site, and I'm deploying the Gatsby site. I've set up the configuration with Netlify. So that's actually the Git repo behind this. Um, and that's the, deploy, that's the deployment that's happening on Netlify, right? So you can see that there's a building tag that goes there. Um, we won't wait for this to build because I already have a built version so that I can get onto the rest of the talk. Um, and that's my simple, simple Gatsby plus Netlify site, right? So <laughs> static site, that's Gatsby. Uh, hi, Kyle. <laughs> and, then you have, and then you have the URL, which is deployed on Netlify, right? OK, so this is nice because I now have an awesome website that can scale forever and can scale to the entire planet, and it's great. But um, databases are also kind of awesome, because, um, because kind of that's where all the data is, right? Um, that's where dynamic, frequently changing data is. So if you have a CMS that might talk to a database, you might have other applications that are talking to a database. Um, you might be doing data science, data analytics stuff, um, especially if you're in the media industry. Um, you might have a team that's kind of doing or churning data, doing some data science stuff chucking that back into a database, right? So you want to read from that database and then build your site. Um, and that would be a fairly common use case. Um, and so that's kind of what we want to see, right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use GraphQL. And we're going to pull data from a Postgres database. And then we're going to render that in our Gatsby site. Um, and that's what we're going to deploy. So it'll be like having dynamic data on a static site, right? Um, I'm going to be using Hasra for doing this surprise. Uh, which is open source, so that's a completely open source stack. Cool. So let me quickly uh, deploy a database. I'm going to do the whole thing uh, right now. So good luck to all of us. So let's call this app on Heroku Jamstack Live. So I'm deploying this on Heroku. What is happening is that Heroku is giving us a free Postgres database. Bless their hearts. Um, <laughs> And what they're also doing is that they're giving us um, a place where we can run a container. And that's where we're running the open source Hasura GraphQL engine, which will sit on top of the database and let us query the database securely with GraphQL. Um, the deployment is super fast. Thank God, they're loaded. OK, cool. Um, so let me go create a table quickly so that I can show you what this is like. So I'm creating a table called author. I'm going to give it an ID and a name. So let's say this is like some dynamic data that's there. You have a list of authors um, that you want to have in your app, right? Let me insert some data. I can see Kyle there in the corner. Kyle is the creator of Gatsby. Uh, Phil got me up on stage. Thank you, Phil. And Randall's out there taking photographs. Thank you, Randall. So 
So these are the three people we have in our database, and these are the three things that we want in our Gatsby site, right? Um, as soon as we have this data, what I can do is I can start querying that in GraphQL. So I don't need to do much here. So that's my GraphQL query ready. Now I want to integrate this in my Gatsby site. So let's head back here and let us use the awesome Gatsby source plugin called Gatsby Source GraphQL. This came out recently. Um, and you should definitely check this out. This lets you take any GraphQL server or API and use that as a data source for your Gatsby app. Um, so I'm going to use that plugin. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting the URL to Jamstack Live. So that's the GraphQL URL where that's my GraphQL endpoint uh, that I can run queries on. And I'm going to call this, a, I'm going to create the root field called Hasura. So every single GraphQL query will be inside that root field called Hasura. Five minutes left. Um, Cool. So now let's actually put that together in our app. So pages. Um, and let's say we're going to, instead of having Gatsby saying hi, we're going to say author list. And I have a component here called author list. So that's my list of, that's going to render the list of authors once I have it. So let's do author list authors. And this will take some data that will come in through our GraphQL query. So let's specify that GraphQL query. So export const query, GraphQL, and so we'll create a query. Um, now, whenever you use the Gatsby source plugin, you need to set a root level node that describes that you can name whatever. So I'm going to call that root node Hasura. And then I'm going to copy that GraphQL query that I'd shown you earlier, which is author ID name. Um, let's set that to here. Cool. And so that's, so every time when Gatsby builds, this data will be kind of pulled, and this will be given to our React component as data. And so I can call this data.hasura.author. That's the path at which our data will be, right? Um, because I trust in myself, I'm going to commit this and deploy this. Don't do this. <laughs> deploy live. And then git push to our site. Cool. Um, the slowest part of this demo is having Netlify build. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, all right. So, so let me just reload this, and you can see that it's building. That's nice. It's good that it's building. Um, and I have this available locally as well, so I can have localhost 8000. So that's that's what I made locally. So that's available locally, and in 45 seconds, this will go live. Here, right? But well, we don't need to wait for that. So, so this is nice. This is cute because I could take data from my database, hook it up with GraphQL, put it in Gatsby, and then I had this app live uh, in three minutes left. Um, what is also nice about the development mode is that I can add more data here as well. So I can go in and say, uh, and Tanmay, that's my name. And as soon as I do that, um, because during in development mode, Gatsby keeps trying to um, refresh the data source, it will pull that, and then it'll re-render that, and you can see that it goes live. But uh, this won't happen in our production version on Netlify, because when Netlify built it, it pulled the three items in the data source, right? It didn't pull everything. So what we want to do is, if the database changes, we want to build our app automatically, right? Two minutes. So we want to build this automatically and have that refresh. So let's set up an event trigger. So I go to Netlify. I'm going to go to Deploy Settings, and I'm going to create I'm going to delete this older webhook that I had when I was practicing. And then I'm going to create a new hook called Jamstack Live Hook. So that's my webhook that if I call, it will re-trigger the build, right? So let me copy that here. And now let me go uh, to Hasura, which has event triggers. What? Uh, and then I can say author change. And so I can say what tables I want to listen on. So I want to listen to the author table. And if there are inserts, updates, or deletes, I wanted to call this webhook, right? Um, that's what I want to do. So now what I can do is I can go in and I can insert some data here. Um, I can say Ben, because I know Ben. Hi, Ben. Um, and then if I go to events here, you'll see that that event gets delivered, right? Um, and if I go to deploys here, you'll see that this build got triggered. We'll again have to wait for 45 seconds. Uh, for <laughs> for this to build and to show up here, but this will show up here, right? So if we take a step back, 
right? What, what I kind of did was um, I said that we'll also use, we'll also listen to changes in the database and use that to trigger a rebuild on Netlify. So now we have like a dynamic database powered site, but it's actually a Jamstack static site, right? Um, and uh, any, any change in the database will call this trigger. So you can even have APIs that will go and call this trigger and that will kind of bust the cache. So this is kind of like heavily caching your website, but the other way around, right? You actually build a static site and then whenever something changes, you rebuild the static site. This was Kai's analogy that he told me a few months ago and so I've shamelessly used that. But, I, but this style of building applications with GraphQL and events and then serverless, um, which are like APIs or functions that you might call out to, we call that style the three-factor dot app style. It's something that we start talking about recently. Do check it out. It fits in really well with the API part of Jamstack. Um, so let me go back to this and cool, it works. Just to show you that it works. So now if anything changes in the database, this refreshes. 15 seconds left. All right, now what if the database changes too frequently, right? Because Netlify, for example, allows you to change, um, has a 200 per minute rate limit. I'm gonna go five, minutes, five seconds extra. So uh, allows you to change, allows you to deploy only f like 200 times a minute, right? So what happens if you are changing stuff in your database faster than that? So what you actually do is you write a simple serverless function and the serverless function is like a debouncer, right? So every time, you, every time you hit the serverless function for deploying, the serverless function doesn't actually deploy, it just goes back to the database and says, I will deploy in a minute or I'll deploy five minutes later. Anything that happens within that time, you don't deploy if you have a scheduled job and then finally, um, if those five minutes have passed, you actually go ahead and deploy it. So I have this debounced builder, which is a JavaScript function. If I'd also done a Google Cloud function demo, this demo would have never gotten done because that is super slow. Uh, so <laughs> but but that, also, that also works. Um, and so you can look at the source code for that. So now instead of calling out to the Netlify trigger directly, if I call out to this JavaScript serverless function that I have, it will debounce with a frequency of a minute. So either your change goes live instantly or if there are too many changes, then you go live uh, with maximum of a minute. So that's my demo. My name is Tanmay. Please come and chat with me about three-factor stuff, GraphQL serverless. Uh, please uh, go check out hasra.io. We're open source. We're on, uh, uh, we're on GitHub. If you like this talk, please star us. It makes me feel like I'm in kindergarten and I'm getting more stars. Um, and uh, this demo is also available on coco98 slash jamstack if you'd like to check it out. Thank you for having me and sorry for shooting the time.